how do I full screen it? Present. Okay, so I will just run through some of it and then we will start with reinforcement learning in the next class. And uh, I hope we should be able to do RLHF in the next week, we will get 4 lectures, we should be able to do that, but let us see. Okay. So, we talk about instruction fine tuning and RLHF. So, and you know you can ask questions about whatever we have done in last 3, 4 classes. So, I will come back to what Babar has asked yesterday and uh, today I will say that I do not know answer to that. So, uh, the blessings of scale, what were the 5 things that we say uh, has enabled uh, you know LLMs like chat GPT? One is transformer architecture. So, see transformers are everywhere, you want to do NLP that is LLMs transformers, you want to do vision they are transformer based, you want to do speech transformer based, even reinforcement learning these days is transformer based right. So, transformers have turned out to be a very very impactful architecture since 2017 its structure has not changed. So, whatever we had done that structure remains the same, we have seen that people have been scaling it, changing different numbers, make the size bigger, but fundamentally nothing has changed. Maybe what has changed is, maybe you learn positional embeddings rather than fixing it, but that is not a big deal. Maybe what else? So, there is yet another change in a couple of architectures, where they you know take layer norm before feeding the input. So, changes as minor as these have been there. So, whatever this is from 1950s to 22 and you see here the all these um, models that we talk about today are huge. Okay. So, <clears throat> a 13 year old human is trained on maybe less than 100 million tokens, then BERT 3 billion, then 30 billion, 200 billion, 1.4 trillion. You go and have a look at any of these architectures and you will be able to understand what does it actually entail. Recap of whatever pretraining is done on. So, you know, these are mostly readings. What do I do? Maybe Phil, I'll first start with any questions that you have. So and then we will go to this. So, what is a world model? People have been calling a language model is a world model and there is a recent uh, interview of uh, Ilya Satskever with uh, the NVIDIA CEO. There also he says large language models are you know world models. So, what does a world model mean? Heard of it before this term? news anything. So, I mean of course, there are um, both sides, some people agree, some people disagree, but what this means is that you know you are talking about text at the internet scale, where billions of human beings have actually contributed to that text. So, if you assume world population is something like 8 billion and if order of billions of people are you know writing something somewhere. Now, 
what some people claim is that this whole text is a projection of is a text projection of the world right. So, of course, it is not the complete world model, but it is a projection of a world model where all the text written by humanity is there and all these models they are trained on the data that is available. Okay. So, one quick question. Uh, So, sequence if it goes like this or in fact, they already say some basic arithmetic they do not learn the Fibonacci sequence Fibonacci sequence. So, um, what do you think LLMs will be able to do this? So, you are given you know for example, the equation is this, this is this. Hmm? So, we will come to this maybe towards the end, um, they can help write code. So, to be honest I do not really know, um, because we have done all these things, but in different uh, flavor. So, all these things are large language models can do. Right. So, yes, this is a good point to start. So, language modeling is not assisting users. Until now, whatever we have been doing, right? What is it that we have been doing? So, all large language models do is, so all language models do is compute the probability of next word. And this is something I have not yet done. Uh, I am, I should have done this before. Uh, which is you know decoding strategies. Um, like at input we have seen how do you tokenize, but how do you get back a token there. So, how do you generate a sentence, which probability distribution you use, which sentence will you take that is something that is remaining I will do that sometimes in these, but large. So, language modeling is not equivalent to assisting users, users they want to interact right. But language models, so if you give this prompt, explain the moon landing to a 6 year old in a few sentences. What do you think will be the uh, logical language modeling completion of this sentence? It will certainly not be an answer to this, okay, let us not put it, it will certainly not be answer to this, but it is more likely that wherever you know you have seen the text, it might have seen you know. So, once you ask this kind of thing, maybe it starts generating other questions like this, right. So, language modeling in itself is not useful and this is where this RLHF and instruction tuning will come into picture. So, language modeling is not same as assisting users because language modeling does this, um, what was the um, advantage of language modeling? What is the advantage of language modeling? Uh, we have been doing language modeling since you know very almost start of the class, but what is the advantage of it? Okay. No, but why language modeling only? Why not some other task? And we can discuss more on this. So, without. Okay, which other task it could have been? See, which five things we have talked about that has enabled the capabilities of chat GPTs like LLM? One is transformer architecture, another is scale. 
that is what we have been doing in last 3 4 classes. What else? The causal language modeling which is basically the language modeling that we are talking about. What else? That unified task you know all tasks have been unified as just one task we have seen that in T 5 paper and the last thing was RLHF the reinforcement learning with human feedback. So, why language modeling? Why not some other task? Why not translation? Why not summarization? This we know today because we have done all this. So, looking back we can say that, but when you were let us say in 2013, 2014, 15 whatever, what will be the right thing to do? What is so special with language modeling? Why this task? Okay. Nee, we have talked about this thing so many times before and you guys know it. Sorry? See language modeling has this extraordinary property and all of you know it, there is nobody who is sitting here and does not know. So, see for every other task you require a label data set at least for most of them. But in this case even if you are given a raw text like 20 terabytes of internet text, right? you still do not need to do anything because preparation of your training examples is super easy here. You have a context window and you are supposed to predict the next words. right? It is easy to prepare this data set without any kind of. So, this becomes a supervised task for you where next token is given to you in your data set and you start training on this. right? Any other task would require some kind of human effort be it translation, be it summarization, whatever it is. And it so happens looking back what we understand today is that language modeling it is a hard problem. Hard problem and at the same time you do not have language without language modeling. If you are doing summarization are you still doing language modeling? See whenever you talk about language that means you are talking about what comes next and that is language modeling. Okay? So, language modeling is a hard problem too you are supposed to. So, like which, lang which problem is more difficult the mask language problem or the language I mean the mask language modeling or language modeling. So, which of these two versions is more difficult mask language model or language model? Mask language modeling is more difficult, right? How? See, mask language modeling cannot be more difficult. In language modeling, you are given just one side of text. In mask language, you are given both sides of text. So, mask language modeling cannot be more difficult than because. In mask language modeling, if you forget the right hand side output and if you want to predict the correct word, this is same as language modeling, but in mask language modeling you are given more context. So, that is actually easier compared to language modeling and that is what we have seen at least in through these papers that Google actually stick to kind of non causal language modeling tasks whereas, open AI actually stick to causal language modeling. Okay? So, what we are saying here what people are saying here is language modeling in itself was chosen because it is a hard task. So, if your machine learning algorithms are able to learn to predict the next word 
it is actually learning a very hard objective right so that means its understanding of language will be much better because it's learning because it's learning to predict hard things so its understanding of language will be much better on the other hand it also has this property of becoming you know you are given just text and you can convert it into supervised task very easily okay but language modeling in itself is of less importance to human beings because we don't really care so prompting is an important thing here prompting means you are supposed to give task to your user where that same thing we had seen that you are supposed to compute the probability of output given input and task so this is something that we have seen already so you pretend fine tune what was the difference between pretending and fine tuning see you can ask questions in what we have done until now today you can think of so today is an assigned tutorial you can think of it that way right so pretend you train from scratch and fine tune you tune on that particular task that you have been talking about so instruction fine tuning please answer the following question what is the boiling point of nitrogen and these are the kind of task that we interact with uh, i mean we give to chat gpt so whatever okay answer the following question by reasoning step by step a cafeteria has th had 30 23 apples if they used 24 lunch bought six more and then they are able to solve these kind of things too and now you evaluate on unseen task as we have been doing so um right this is what instructional fine tuning is and this is what now they are doing. so until now we have been talking about instruction fine tuning what is instruction fine tuning retain a transformer network right and then fine tune that network to do a particular task fine tune on many task and you adapt to that particular task so you have this base network architecture and then when you fine tune you put a couple of you put one more linear layer with softmax and then do whatever you wanted to do there but here what we are saying you have instruction fine tuning instead instruction pre training so what are we going to do in this case now as is usually the case data plus model scale is key for this to work so if you if anybody asks you what makes you know chat gpt gpt4 work so well and you are not supposed to name five things what other things will you can you name see scale is one of the very big factors here we have seen in all those papers that scale was a very big factor so data plus model scale is the key for this to work and others aid to it so for example the super natural instructions data set contains over 1.6 so 1600 tasks and 3 million plus examples all these different kind of tasks you have classification sequence tagging rewriting translation question answering so how do we evaluate such a model where you have so it is not you know task specific thing anymore so your pre training is fine but your fine tuning is not task what was pre training until now pre training on which which objective language modeling so you were pre training on language modeling and fine tuning on one of these tasks so you take this task fine tune on this you take that pre trained network fine tune on this take that pre trained network fine tune on this and so on but now we are doing something else so what is instruction pre training now what can this be so i am just i am just interested in this 
if you cut this fine tuning here, replace this by pre training, what might this entail? That is it. Hmm? So, if you were pre training until now only on one objective that was language modeling, do not do this pre train on everything basically. So, language modeling is one of these tasks, right. So, but all these tasks they require most of these tasks will require uh, supervised data set, you know, you, you need to have input output kind of settings. Language modeling has this very good property even though there you need input output kind of thing, but it was super easy to create these data sets are expensive to create. So, what they are saying is instruction pre training means train on all these data sets. So, massive multitask language understanding um, new benchmark for measuring language model performance on 57 diverse knowledge and uh, so you know GPT-3 seems to be working at least for some of these things much better than the random guesses. Um, okay, so, they are able to answer these questions too. I do not know what is this MMLU. So, massive multitask language understanding new benchmark for measuring language model performance on 57 diverse knowledge intensive tasks. Uh, I have not seen this paper. So, let me see what might this mean you might help me too. So, this must be something like what can be percent what are we measuring here in percentage accuracy or something else. Challenging knowledge intensive best benchmarks basically you require knowledge of a lot of things. So, in order to be able to un you know answer this what is true for type 1 a supernova. So, to be able to correctly answer this you need to have a lot of knowledge to be able to correctly answer this in a population of giraffes and environmental change occurs. So, you need to have a lot of knowledge this is what it says knowledge intensive benchmarks that means they are not trivial and straightforward. But what is this average percentage of what? I do not know, but if I have to make a guess that must be accuracy, but then accuracy here close to 90 percent is what makes me skeptical of this. I do not know what is this. Zoom what? You cannot read this? Okay. I cannot this is in no. okay this is too much so gpt2 you have here somewhere close to 30% but guys what is this i don't know so, what is there on the y axis I do not know, but I do not know it might be accuracy. Okay. All right. So, a new benchmark for multitask LLMs, but you know. So, basically you have 200 plus task spanning common sense, free response, programmatic, logical reasoning, reading comprehension, emotional understanding, contextual question answering and so on. So, these are actually difficult tasks 
okay again you know um, so this subtask converts various uh, so these kind of you know this is some chinese or um, some uh, japanese or whatever letter written in forms of you know dot dots and hash hash so this is kanji script into ascii i mean th this script must be kanji i don't know this must if this is mandarin or so but these are uh, you know chinese or um, japanese letters written in ascii art and then you want language model guess their meaning from this art right so it is not in the form of letters that we know so these things are my tokens but what is given to me is not in form of so i'm not sure if uh, i am able to make sense here see if you will take this as a language modeling what is it that what this is made up of which kind of tokens dot and hash right but this is not actually a combination of dots and hash only this is also a chinese letter so something that you would have a encoding in unicode so this becomes much more difficult you know so if you want to write a in this form and the system will still be able to recognize that you are writing a and not just hash and dots that's a difficult task instruction fine tuning so model input whatever before instruction fine tuning um so question is in the following sentences explain the antecedents of the pronoun which thing pronoun refers to or state that it is ambiguous the reporter and uh, the chef will discuss their favorite dishes options are this let's think step by step so before instruction fine tuning the reporter and the chef will discuss their favorite dishes the reporter and the chef discuss the reporter's favorite dishes the reporter and the chef will discuss the chef's favorite dishes the reporter and the chef will discuss the reporter's and the chef's favorite dishes and what is going on here no this the, these things tell you all no it is not see this is the question posed to the language model so there is a context given to it there is a sentence given to it there are options given to it you are supposed to check one of them you know and you are supposed to think step by step so you have to go step by step to be able to answer this question but if you don't do instruction fine tuning right what does that mean your model will still be doing just language modeling it will be predicting just the next token right so the question that human so see language models are not helpful to human beings human beings don't care about what do you generate next token i don't care human beings want to be able to interact with the model like in this manner and if you give just this kind of question to raw language model all it will do is simply start generating something all these sentences they make sense they are grammatically correct and uh, you know they are logical too but they are simply not the response to what the user had asked so for this you need to do instruction fine tuning question ha huh, this one so highly recommend trying flan out to get a sense of its capabilities so what they are saying is you can go and have a look at what this model is doing again what is good no what is good with t5 so see t5 is not just language modeling 
what is it there you give input and task to work on right so highly recommended trying flyn out to get a sense of its capabilities capabilities of what capabilities of flyn t5 which is actually able to take a prompt and a input and generate something sensible that will still not give you the what you are looking for because for that you require instruction fine tuning nay no, no model in this particular figure is looking like instruction fine tuning including flan t5 but flan t5 is better than a language model per se because because it kind of you know unifies this uh, uh, so in in t5 i don't have i don't model my output probability distribution as just function of input and uh, task is captured by the uh, architecture in that you have one unified architecture task and input are both input to the model and then it is supposed to generate outputs so in that sense this objective is better than you know causal language modeling this one this takes input and task as a input yes so remember we had seen this somewhere here this is a t5 kind of thing this is what flan t5 now after instruction fine tuning the reporter and the chef will discuss their favorite dishes does not indicate whose favorite dishes they will discuss so the answer is c ambiguous okay so point here is what we have done until now transformers scale language modeling and one more thing is t5 okay not rlhf t5 you mean causal language modeling nick language modeling causal language modeling i'm calling that same thing okay um, i'm not talking about you know uh, mlms or anything else so if you talk about just those five things if you give just those five capabilities to your large language models they are not good at interacting with human beings to be able to interact with human beings you need to have instruction fine tuning now you have a huge diversity of instruction tuning data sets yes I don't get the question. No, see, we are discussing a different thing. What we are saying is that we have been doing language modeling, language modeling, language modeling, right? A as the as if language modeling is superpower, which it is, right? So your model will learn to generate very good. next output so it will be very good at you know completing things but human beings for you know being able to be useful to a human being where you interact with it language modeling is not the right task you need to add more things which is instruction fine tuning so you ask this question to a language model it starts like this now this looks like a continuation of this continuation of this not a response of this this looks like a continuation of this so you know it is using all these words like the reporter the chef the favorite dishes and so on so whatever it is writing is coherent to this grammatically correct everything is fine right we are talking see 
GPTs all GPTs are all language models. So when we are talking about this, we are actually talking about GPTs. We are not talking about BERT in this case because BERT is BERT is not good for generation. BERT is good if you want to use it for classification downstream tasks, but BERT is not good for generation. So, unless you have the decoder part in your transformer model, you would not be good at generation and encoder only LLMs do not have that. They are not even LLMs in that strict sense. So, there is no fine tuning. See that is the whole point authors I want authors of at least instruction GPT want to say fine tuning is good, but we want to get rid of that as well. We want to have one unified thing which is a powerful model with capabilities of interacting with user. So, it gives responses uh, of the kind what users want and not you know a natural continuation of the given text. Language models the way we have done until now will simply continue the continuation of whatever input was given to them because they are language models. So, they get this context and start continue from that context. So, we have seen that this is this is not out of context, but is not helpful to human beings because that was not asked. So, now we start getting into that regime. So, what have we learned from this? You can generate data synthetically. You do not need many samples to instruction fine tune, but and crowdsourcing can be pretty effective. The problem is that all these things are super expensive. And remember we have talked about this before. So, what advantage chat GPT had over Google Bard or Gemini for that matter? Why all these keep on getting backlashes in terms of the uh, you know the quality of outcome, but the same thing does not happen with chat GPT or GPT 4. It is usually much better than any of these. Why do you think so? I do not have a you know a definite answer to this, but in my uh, opinion it is the kind of the RLHF training that chat GPT has had nobody has had that. So, chat GPT got 1 million users in just 5 days. So, the kind of interaction has happened with chat GPT of human beings where they have rated that they so what is it we will we'll come to that when we will say if you ask human beings to you know rate from 1 to 10 they are pathetic at doing it pathetic in the sense that you take aggregate and it is it is a mess I will rate something 10 you will rate it 1 you will rate something 10 I might rate it 3 right. So, human beings are bad at this that is why you see chat GPT or whichever of these they do not ask you to rate at a scale of 1 to 10 what they simply ask you is good or bad. So, just tell me whether this was good or bad even their human beings mess up, but that is ok. So, instruction fine tuning is simple and straightforward generalized to unseen tasks. So, when you do instruction fine tuning the positive side of this would be simple and straightforward generalized to unseen task, but one limitation of instruction fine tuning is obvious it is expensive to collect ground truth data for tasks, but there are other. So, pro other problems are tasks like open ended creative generation have no right answer. So, write me a story about a dog and her pet grasshopper this has no right answer right you just write a story about this and the user will only judge whether this makes sense or not. So, there is no as such right answer to this 
लैंग्वेज मॉडलिंग पेनलाइजेज ऑल टोकन लेवल मिस्टेक्स इक्वली बट सम एरर्स आर वर्स देन अदर्स सो इवन विद इंस्ट्रक्शन फाइन ट्यूनिंग देर इज अ मिसमैच बिटवीन एल एम ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ सेटिस्फाई ह्यूमन प्रिफरेंसेस दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो इवन विद इंस्ट्रक्शन फाइन ट्यूनिंग देर इज अ मिसमैच बिटवीन द लैंग्वेज मॉडल ऑब्जेक्टिव विच इज जनरेट दी नेक्स्ट टोकन एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ सेटिस्फाई ह्यूमन प्रिफरेंसेस सो टू बी एबल टू मेक यूजफुल टू ह्यूमन बींग्स यू हैव टू बी एबल टू सम हाउ अचीव दिस ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ सेटिस्फाइंग ह्यूमन प्रिफरेंसेस टू सो कैन बी एक्सप्लिसिटली अटेम्प टू सेटिस्फाई ह्यूमन प्रिफरेंसेस एंड दिस इज वेयर वी कम टू आर एल एच एफ ओके सो आई एल ओपन दिस फॉर क्वेश्चन नाउ आई or maybe we can take a couple of slides but this is something i plan to do on board we'll do all these objectives okay so i don't want to go into this through slides so let's say we were training a language model on some task example summarization for each language model sample s imagine we had a way to obtain a human reward of that summary how many of you are aware of this terminology of reward basically how many of you did ai last time ai everybody did that right so what is reinforcement learning so what is reinforcement learning then maximize the expected utility but more what are the terms you have there so there are states and you have reward that is the main thing so if you want a particular thing to happen in certain way you give them rewards and then as he said you maximize the expected utility which is the sum of all these rewards but then you discount them too so all those are details will come to but the question here is each lm sample s imagine we had a way to obtain human reward of that summary so let's say we are training a language model on some task for example summarization so from here onwards think we are talking about summarization for each language model sample s so this is a sample this is a sample this is a sample no this is the actually input given to you these are two summaries uh, so let's say this summary 1 user assigns score 8 this summary as 2 user assigns score 1.2 an earthquake hit san francisco there was a minor property damage but no injuries bay area has good weather but is prone to earthquakes and wildfires now what is the thing given to you for uh, summarization this whole thing so san francisco california cnn uh, magnitude of 4.2 earthquake shook the san francisco and so on which one do you think is a better summary why so second is the right statement may be factually right as well but is certainly not this summary of or at least not a better summary of this one compared to this one on the other hand if you see the model has understood the fact that magnitude 4.2 so magnitude 4.2 means it has to be minor property damage but no injuries like you know you can't say uh, there was a catastrophe due to earthquake with magnitude 4.2 in san francisco and then now we want to maximize the expected reward of samples from our language modeling so these are the things we'll start doing from board again any questions until now and then we'll see that human beings i mean we don't want human beings to be able to assign these things we just want to tell them thumbs up or thumbs down that's it questions चलो डन फॉर टुडे देन